In today's episode of Reality Renovision, we are renovating a basement. Now it's not we, it's actually they. The homeowners are gonna do it. They're gonna use all of our videos as their template and their guideline. I'm just here to consult and have a quick walkthrough and make sure that their plan is solid. I think we're gonna increase value in this kitchen. This is not acceptable. And that is money in the bank. This is where it gets fun. Fire in the hole! It's not the time to be putting out the big dollars. Thank you, hero. Here's another tool you won't need to buy. Perfect, every time. Well, this is really reality renovating, isn't it? My goodness, let's check out this basement. We have got, uh, looks like about a 40 year old home. It's been renovated, it's completely finished. Um, this is what we would call a classic homeowner special. I don't even wanna um, call it a DIY because it's not quite up to even do it yourself standards. But this is the kind of thing you can expect to see in a lot of finished basements around the, the round town. Bottom line, people don't have the skills or the understanding, but they wanna try to finish the space so it's livable. So what we have here is an L-shaped basement that's got carpet direct to concrete. Um, it's, there's a moisture thing going on down here, so we don't have proper insulation and vapor barrier, probably no ventilation, we don't have a lot of lighting, so the windows are small. <laughs> there's just so much going on here, but you can see the one thing that I love about this is the incredible attention to detail. Although it's done poorly, you can see that had this homeowner had access to the right information, they probably could have done a fantastic job. But because they don't have the skills, you get this. It's a, it's a collaboration of, of effort and, and ignorance. It's a perfect combination of that. Anyway, we're gonna have a quick walkthrough, take a look at all the things that were done improperly and what could be done differently. And I'm here to consult today because the homeowners are actually going to follow all of our video processes and they're gonna renovate the space. So I'm just here to have a look, maybe point out a few dangerous areas, some things of concern, and come up with a few ideas to help this function a lot better. Okay, so let's just take a look at a few of the things here that we can highlight just to bring some understanding. I mean, the windows have been renovated. You might recognize that. I actually did that in one of our videos. So at least the windows are new. They are in the concrete, so no matter what we do for renovating here, that doesn't have to be touched, just refinished around the trim. We do have room lighting set up. We have a smoke alarm. I don't know if the battery's ever been changed in this. Yeah, hasn't. <laughs> We have a bulkhead, which I'm glad sometimes I'm a little bit shorter than my kids, but this would be a bump head if you're more than 6'1". It's been really built down below the ductwork. Now one of the challenges in this room is the ceiling is not a full eight feet, it's more like a seven. So when you add your, your, your ducting here for your heat runs and air conditioning, it can get quite low. So what you wanna do is find a way to cover it up, but have it lifted up as high as possible. So I'm gonna show them how to get that done. Other than that, I mean, the exterior walls, we've got this cute little finish on it. It looks odd to me. Like right off the bat, I can see the, the line here in the drywall that says that's the edge of the sheet. And this wall is recessed. Yeah, see, I got a sneaky feeling that this is the original wall that the builder put together. Remember, we're in a four season climate. So we had a building code that required about four feet down from the ceiling to insulate. And then they would hang these half walls okay and insulate them in vapor barrier so it looks like the homeowner might have done something to finish the bottom by themselves just wanna, yeah there you go yeah that's definitely okay so we've got a few different layers of history here there's a black plastic here that would make sense so yeah definitely that's the case so this was originally finished in a paneling Paneling, paneling nails, lots of, lots of hand nails, oh my goodness. Yeah, someone took a lot of time with the hammer and nails to put that together. And I'm thinking, is that the same thing I'm seeing across the way over there? So this was really actually quite common. That's, that's pretty solid stuff. So that was probably uh, in the 70s, the paneling used to be quite thick. Nowadays it's so flimsy, it has to go over another wall board. But back in those days, 
they made it to go on the frame of the wall independently. So at least that'll come off easy. It's just a bunch of these little tacked on nails. But you gotta love this. I mean, the wallpaper over top of a, a finished paneling. That's spectacular. <laughs> what a great way to change the look to something rustic. <laughs> okay, so now I know that this is all part of the original part of the house to this point. We want to just see, let's start from the bottom and we'll work our way up. This is a loose, well, it was tacked in. It has a proper, yeah, even the under pad is feeling moisture in it. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a 12 by 12 stick on tile, uh, direct bond to concrete. And depending on which system we use, it's not necessary to remove it. I know a lot of the older ones have got a really high level of the dangerous kind of asbestos with the little hooks on it. So if you're at all concerned about the old tile that's a direct bond to the floor, if it's attached to the floor, my advice there is just put in a subfloor system. We have a video for that. Just put the dimpled plastic, new plywood over top and leave it where it lies. It's not going to hurt anything and because it's vinyl, it means it's made from an oil-based product, it's not going to rot. So we'll just get rid of all of this old wooden trim work and be able to pull this and move forward. So that's the good news. Now, look at the size of this box, eh? You gotta wonder why they didn't just build a wall all the way across to make this room functional. Because right now with this L shape, that's all gotta be traffic. That's the door to the mechanical room. It doesn't leave you a lot of space left by the time you leave room to get around the building. Nothing functions here. At least if you had a wall here, you'd be able to have furniture and TV living space. But All right, all right, let's take a look at this. I don't have my hammer on me. We'll have a quick peek. Yep, okay, so we got waistline. Oh, look at that. We do have something here, insulated vapor barrier right to the floor. It's regular wood on the plate on the floor. Unfortunately, all the wood is direct in contact with the concrete, so it's all sitting there rotting, and that will be the source of that smell. Remember, if you're gonna go wood direct on concrete, make sure you use the pressure-treated lumber so it won't rot. It's still good in our area for building code, but even better than that is use a plastic sill gasket or a sill plate of some sort to have a separation so moisture can't go from the concrete which is in direct contact with the ground underneath this house and comes right up into the wood. It makes a hell of a mess. Okay, so this is our heat duct. It's been painted. Lots of drips. <laughs> That's, I love that. you gotta love that. Now these are the staple on tiles. Careful when you're working with this stuff, you're always gonna find your droppings from your neighborhood rodent collection. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be all over the place. You're actually, the benefit here is that this is all just strapped together with these little nails. So this will all come apart relatively simple. I think this whole basement's gonna just kinda fall apart, to be honest with you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, I'm falling on somebody's head with all the poops. There we go. Okay. So somebody at some point decided that they were gonna semi-finish the space and painted all the ductwork. Oh. And then the next person came along and said, no, we're gonna close it all up. Layer on, layer on, layer. Now listen, folks, I mean, this kind of construction, this takes a lot of time and energy. Like I said, this is, I would rather have a homeowner renovate something in their house because at least if they're given the right information and the right tools and the right materials, they're gonna put the time and energy into doing it right. This is why I'm believing that, you know, teaching people how to build stuff is gonna be so much value to them. Because look at the effort that goes into this. There's thousands of nails down here, done with the hammer. Give this guy a little bit of a handbook and a manual, and maybe an air nailer. <laughs> amazing what he could have been able to do. It's really amazing here, that what the thinking that's gone into this, because you've got the I-beam, and this is painted. So this, you can't get any lower, any, any higher than this. It comes across, the ductwork is lower. So they finished the ceiling way up tall here, then they came back down because there's a water line way over here, but they've still got, man, two and a half inches of space here. Three inches when you add the tile, the ductwork. And the funny thing is this ductwork, it's hanging almost an inch off the floor. So there's actually room to lift the whole ductwork up as well. And when you're in a really tight space like this, taking the time to maybe 
tighten some things up and then reconstruct it so your finished drywall is right off the bottom, that extra few inches is huge amount of space. Oh, especially if you got kids as tall as mine. <laughs> I just wanted to point this out. When I took a quick glance at the amount of electrical that's down here and we have the proper amount of room lights. We have a three-way light in the stairwell. Um, there's an independent switch for the, around the other side of the L. There's a plug, it seems like every 10 feet, maybe even smaller. So it looks like all that wiring has been done to code. It's just, it makes you wonder because the irony is, is here we have this ivory colored plug with a brown cover plate. It just makes you think, why the brown cover plate? Why not take the time to switch this over? Maybe this was wired originally with this yellow painted ductwork and every back, everything done at that point was all beige. And then we added the wallpaper and then just changed the color of this so it wouldn't stand out so much. But I'm thinking this might be actually wired legally just at first glance. And that would be a treat. All right, now I can't wait to show you this. Let's take a look up at the ceiling. This is awesome. <laughs> you just lay back and have a quick look. Wow. This is like the most intricate, large size parquet floor on a ceiling I've ever seen in my life. Ah, where to begin? Again, you know, we have the evidence here that somebody really was trying their best, which is awesome. We have all these little pieces of wood that we've been ripped through a table saw. They've got all the binding marks. So it's probably just a tiny little unit with a cheap blade right out of the Home Depot. And they've ripped all this down and then they brad nailed this entire thing to the ceiling. And it looks like they've got it all strapped and then they added some sort of a, there you go. Look how thin, that's some delicate work. This is like eighth of an inch. <laughs> Somebody has literally taken two by fours and run them through the table saw at eighth of an inch thick to create this effect. Wow. So here we go, we got a water shot off. I'm gonna recommend that they change this out. This is the kind, it's got the handle, and it has two gaskets in it. And when you close it in the winter time, one gasket's compressed, and then you open it in, in the summer and the spring, and the other gasket compresses. They always end up leaking over time. It's soldered right into the copper. So we're gonna get that switched out to just a quarter inch, quarter turn ball valve. That'll eliminate their problems in the future and reduce the risk of them having any flooding but we need to make sure that we put a bigger trap door on so that we can actually open up the bleeder valve and drain the water line out. So important. And I'm gonna actually suggest that they convert this from copper and go PEX to their hose bib because in the northern climates, the PEX, even if it freezes, it doesn't explode. It'll expand with the ice. And then when it thaws, it'll go back to its normal shape. And that is gonna save you a flood in your basement. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a, a time there when the drywall mud, uh, having this whole Tuscan textured effect was really popular. <laughs> it's because homeowners didn't have an ability to do the drywall mud. This guy tried, obviously, but it's just nasty. All right, so everything from the framing and insulation, it would have been a new home, here you go, just a box on the wall with insulation and plastic. Everything else here has been done by the homeowner. The framing, isn't isn't proper the electrical it looks like it might have been run properly maybe it's an electrician who finished his basement we don't know so that's just a quick recap here we have uh, structurally not any major issues the some of the cosmetic framework which I'll call it closing up the walls is, needs to be addressed but for the most part I mean the stairs are done properly there's great load transfer um, really what we're looking at here is it's just a cosmetic disaster What we have here is very, very creative. <laughs> uh, you never get tired of seeing this kind of stuff, eh? Somebody made their own little man cave for a wood heat source, which is understandable. I mean, back, what was it, 15 years ago or so, we had a nice storm up here. 
that took out power for a couple of weeks at a time for a lot of the region. And so people started getting creative. This has got a motor on it and everything to blow the air somewhere. Well, I wonder if it's connected back into the main duct line. But this is the kind of contraption that people put together, which is uh, scary because it's a major fire hazard. There's just nothing about this is done the way it should be done. And it's just somebody trying to, you know, keep their house warm. Amazing. So these are exterior pavers, concrete. I understand the concept here, you know, there's a bit of a design element going on. <laughs> uh, but this is all going to have to be removed. And I think we're going to end up using this space, actually, and hopefully putting it in a bathroom. That would be a great thing to add down here. It would be a nice little tiny three-piece bath. But uh, it does really look like these are all just panels that were pre-made and then installed and then cocked in there, maybe piping bag. Oh, there, there's, there's plywood showing here. Okay, yeah, definitely panels. Makes me a little nervous to stand under here. I think I'm going to get out. <laughs> All right, so just to recap, what we have down here is a great space. We have a mechanical room tucked into the inside of the stair turn. Behind that door, there's a laundry facility area and some storage back there. And so out here is the living space. And basically, it looks like a cosmetic disaster, but it has a lot of potential. So it's just a matter of putting in some blood, sweat, and tears and peeling everything back and starting over again making sure that the mechanical and electrical are sound first, get that inspected, and then moving forward. It's basically just drywall to finish, but you have to define your space again. So um, my recommendation would be to get rid of the L shape, put a door near the middle of this wall, that, and I would put a wall all the way across. That gives you an actual living space and then a great place for an office. Very important to get some ventilation down here though. I think we might even want to suggest putting in an exhaust fan that you have on a humidity sensor, just to make sure that you have the ability to pull the air out of this basement, but it's not too difficult. And everything that they're gonna need is in our videos. This is just a cosmetic repair. So really looking forward to see how this turns out. Uh, stay tuned and watch the rest of the video. <laughs> we'll see you together. So we are back at the house. Uh, been about five, maybe six months, but the homeowner contacted us to say, hey, we're done with all the cosmetic work. Want to have you come back in, do a quick walkthrough, and then we'll just have a discussion about what they did. I think this is awesome to get it on camera. I haven't seen the work yet. So we're going to get a real reaction and then walk through, talk about the changes. And then at the end of the video, after we've seen everything, we're going to discuss you know, the costs involved, um, the labor that was involved, challenges that they ran into. There may have been other things going on here that I wasn't even aware of, but like I'm just really excited to see this because apparently they never had to contact me even once. All the information they needed was in the video library. So we're gonna go and have to check this out. Look at how bright and oh my goodness. Wow, dude, this is awesome. Love the flooring, love the space. Look at this, You've oh, you got the wall across now. Holy cow, look at the height. What did you end up getting here? Boom, 
Hey, 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 you're two inches above legal. That's awesome. You know, there's a building code. You gotta keep these things above 78 inches. Before it was definitely way below that. This is great. Lots of lighting. You got the LED pots in there. Look how simple the lines are. Wow. <laughs> my, my, my. You know what's amazing is this has actually added a lot of value to the home. I know it took five months, but in most cases, you hire a contracting company and they sub all the work out, it's gonna take that long anyway. You might as well just do it yourself on the weekends and save your money. Man, all right, let's take a look over here. This used to be, this is where the rock wall was, right? Over here, so now, wow. <laughs> just enough clearance, eh? that's amazing. Okay, so this is gonna be a perfect space for a bathroom then. Wow, absolutely loving it. All right, okay, look at that. My goodness, oh, what the heck? This was never here before, was it? This is the mechanical, look at that. Now you've got access in here, so you can actually change the hot water tank if you need to. And your humidity control is hooked up again. Well done. Look at that. So I guess the only thing you need to do is put the railing on the stairs after you bring your sofa down, eh? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Wow, the air down here feels so much different. It is nice and dry. Oh, you got heat in the ceiling. Cold air return. Brilliant. And the, the smell is gone. This, this smells like a new house now. Brilliant. Oh, new smoke detector. Yeah, that battery works. Good. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. You know what? Uh, for a do-it-yourselfer, this is, this is an awesome space. Way to get such a huge space out of such a small space. So now you've got a place you can set up your sofa, you got tables, a TV wall. Now, I think it's time we should go and check out what's in the other room. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Okay. Nice. Nice. So you got a oh, very cool low, low flesh mount light. Good. Oh, and that's your access under your plumbing now. So instead of a huge box, you just got this little trap door in off the corner. Very nicely done. You got a trap door in the ceiling for your water. Again, heat, another smoke detector, awesome. You know, sometimes when you got a small space, you have nothing but corners and boxes, and that's okay. <laughs> but it takes a lot of work to get all that done. Look at this space here now. My goodness. Again, even with the door shut, the air in here, the air quality is so good. Really well done. Wow. You know, the only suggestion I might have for this space is if you take this door and just cut another half an inch off the bottom of that door. That way, that'll assist with the air return to the other room so that, you know, you're not gonna have a, a problem getting this air exchanged because right now you're pushing in more than you can push out, okay? But, man. <laughs> Not bad at all. And yeah, I love the way you return the windows with the drywall so you don't have extra woodwork and detail and it doesn't look too cluttered. Nice and simple. There's enough lines and everything in here already. But man, I don't miss that ceiling. <laughs> I'm just having a flashback now back to those little wooden slats. This is awesome. Oh my goodness. And what is this? Is this a vinyl floor? Yeah. Vinyl floor, plank. This looks like that life-proof stuff from the Home Depot. Nice. That has a nice tight fit. I'm glad I've finally seen this installed somewhere. I haven't had a chance to install this yet. Oh, that has a nice joint to it. Very good. Wow. Okay, so now that you've seen the basement, we're actually gonna take a minute and break down all of the material costs and the challenges and some of the construction techniques that had to take place to make the transition from the old to the new. So let's go take care of all that information. Okay, so the biggest challenge that was here before was the fact that there was no air circulation. Turns out that the heat ducts were buried in the ceiling underneath all of that extra work, and the cold air return is of zero value if you're not pushing air into a space, you can't pull air out of it. 
So now we got the heat on, we're just gonna do, there. that's the cold air return. And you know you've got pulling and you got, that's just brilliant. So let's just talk about the ceiling first. We'll work our way from the top down in this room because the ceiling height itself, the, the main part of the building is still the same height. The difference is, is because we're using those LED th slim line lights, you're able to put them anywhere, even under ductwork in the ceiling. So you don't have to drop your ceiling height down to make room for pot lights. This is one of the best advantages that is on the market for basements ever, because we have a seven foot ceiling. So if you want to have lots of natural lighting in here and go with those white LEDs, this is the best way to go. Stop using cans, folks. Just go with a slimline LED and you will have as much bright light as you ever wanted. The ductwork itself, though, my God, you know, the homeowner told me that they actually raised the height of the ducting itself up and then they framed it across where this is right on that ducting coming across. We've got an almost an extra four and a half inches here now. I mean, you remember the old video? I was just like right here. That's just incredible. That, that makes all the difference in the world. So now when you're walking through here, it's all living space where before it used to be each side of the ductwork felt like it was living space. <laughs> this is really amazing. So the homeowners told me the process for the exterior of the wall, um, it had to be updated completely. Just like we talked about in the original video, it was, it was kind of screaming at us. It was just a, a bare minimum code construction. And then, so what they had to do is kind of remove everything right back to the very beginning. They left all the wiring intact and in place and then just reinstated new wood, which is perfectly legitimate. What you can do is remove all the two by four studs and, and plate and then rebuild in place and then just staple your wiring to the back side of the stud. Works awesome. And then now they're up to a date. They got a 16 inch on center. They have a pressure treated plate. They've got proper rock wool insulation and an airspace between the insulation and the outside wall. So that allows everything in this building because it's older and the foundation isn't waterproof. It allows any moisture that gets in to be absorbed into the air cavity and transferred into the building and removed. And if any moisture does make it into the inside of this cavity, which is really difficult when you have a good quality vapor barrier, there's enough airflow down here to keep everything in a nice dry level. That's why this is all so comfortable. It's a simple construction technique, but it's very, very effective and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So again, 16 inch on center, pressure treated plate, rock wool insulation, vapor barrier, airspace between the outside wall and the inside wall. And everything will go well for you. And so now, once that's all accomplished, it's just a matter of putting on drywall and watching all those drywall videos to learn how to take. So now we're just gonna talk real quick because now that we've talked about how the ex exterior of the building has been closed up and the ceiling's closed up, we'll talk about the interior of the building. And you know, when I was doing the consultation here originally, we talked about throwing this wall across here just to create a living space. So the, the homeowner took the advice and in this wall here is actually gonna be the TV wall. And so what he did is he actually, um, and this is where it's really beneficial to know the end from the beginning, went out and bought his TV mount and then made sure that he marked the center of the wall, where the, knew where the TV mount was gonna go while he was framing and put extra wood in that wall right where he needs it to mount his TV mount. Brilliant. Nothing worse than watching TV and having the thing fall off the wall because the <laughs> drywall anchors have fallen out. Ay ay ay. So that is brilliant. So now they've got an office space over here, a great little sitting space here. Oh, man. And you know, that old area where they had the, the, I don't know, what was this, a rock wall? They had like a wood stove, I guess, set up in here at some point because they had closed off the heat vents. They needed to add heat, you know, renovation after renovation. So now this area goes off to the bathroom that has yet to be finished. It's just a work in progress. This is step two, right? Don't be surprised if doing the whole basement with a bathroom takes an entire year of weekends. It would not be a surprise. I mean, it's, it's really hard to stay motivated on a regular basis. Life is busy. But can you imagine living in a house like this for 15 years and then in one year you have a completely brand new home? I think it's just really worth the investment. My goodness. Okay, so we talked about the ceiling, the outside walls, the inside walls. Let's talk about the floor. Because honestly, in, in the basement, this is a real tricky subject. Uh, I've done a few different flooring videos of how to do floor covering in a basement. We've covered a lot of different products from tile to doing laminate, subfloor systems, yes, no, vinyl. In this situation, we talked to uh, the consultation about the peel and stick tile that was originally on the concrete. Now, I don't know if that was a peel and stick or a uh, vinyl that was glued in place. It doesn't really matter. The point is, it wasn't moving anywhere and it's not necessary to remove it first before you move forward. 
So if you're going to finish a basement and you've got that kind of environment going on, you can finish it with just a simple vinyl tile. Now I'm going to just say this out loud. We did not get sponsored by anybody to talk about this product, but this is the product that was used. So let's talk about it. This is the Life Proof Vinyl. It's a Home Depot registered product line. It is a full quarter inch thick and it has a really thick wear layer and a nice vinyl solid core. And then it also has an oil based underlay that's attached to this that absorbs impact and reduces sound transfer. And it makes it feel a lot better on the feet. If you put a thinner vinyl plank on a floor, on concrete, you're going to feel like you're walking on concrete. It's going to be hard on the knees if you're on it all day long, and it's going to be very, very, it's going to, you're going to feel the impact every step. This kind of thing absorbs a lot of that impact and it reduces the stress on the knees. Now, I get questions all the time on the channel about, um, can I just put vinyl right on the concrete? Yes. Okay. What happens in case of a flood? The truth is, if you get a flood and you call an insurance company, they're going to come in and rip everything out and throw it in the garbage anyway, so don't worry about it. It's not a consideration. <laughs> All right? What happens if you get some, a water event or a spill? Is it waterproof? Yes. Because it doesn't absorb water, it's waterproof. So if you have water that lands on the top or a, or a bucket falls over, clean it up and don't even think twice about it. But the lovely thing about this is that this is not going to have, it has no organic material. Okay? So it does not have any any part of this, no properties in this at all that are going to rot and cause any odors over time, which is awesome. And because it has such a real stiff, thick center core to it, this locking system is going to keep it from coming apart. Now, the only other question people ask all the time, and there's a big debate, expansion and contraction, right? These are fancy words that a lot of people, especially the trolls on the internet, love to use to try to make a point and make themselves sound educated. Products expand and contract under different conditions based on temperature and humidity. Since this is not affected by anything to do with moisture because it will not absorb it, it won't soak it up and it won't dry out, it doesn't expand and contract because of humidity. Because it's vinyl and because it's on a basement floor, the temperature of that floor for the rest of its life is going to be 10 degrees. I don't care how hot or cold it is outside, if the heating system is running in this house, this floor is going to be 10 degrees. There is zero expansion and contraction on a concrete floor in a basement. Now, on the main floor and upper floor of a house, if you have a, a, a duplex, the expansion and contraction that takes place on vinyl is only related to temperature, and it only expands a little tiny bit in extreme heat. Okay? So just so you know, get that out of your mind. Compared to other types of flooring, this expands and contracts about 5% of what other floors do. So I call it a zero expansion contraction issue. And that'll help you make up your decisions as you're moving forward. Okay, so let's just talk about the cost of this project first. This entire area down here, complete gut and rebuild, $4,000 Canadian, which is amazing. If that's about 3,000, 3,200 in American dollars. Now, what do you get out of it? You get a livable space. You can actually do things down here, feel comfortable bringing in furniture, don't have to worry about mold. I guess, the, let's be honest, is the truth, is this a professional quality job? Close, depending on who you call to do the job, okay? There are a lot of guys in the industry who aren't gonna do a better job than this, right? So, is it perfect? No. Is it going to detract from anybody ever wanting to buy this house? Definitely not. If you come down this basement after touring home after home after home, after DIYer after DIYer, you're going to walk into this basement and go, wow, finally someone who did a really nice job of finishing a basement. Okay? And that is the goal, isn't it? We don't have to try to be, you know, to the, to the level of Picasso down here. We just need it clean, functional, mechanically proper. Everything needs to work. The air needs to be clean. It needs to be warm. And all the sight lines work here. It's really a nice little space. So really proud of what they've done. And you can do this too. $4,000, a few months of hard work. I would dare say that the value of this home has definitely more than recovered in value, the cost of this project, and he's in the red, okay? So in the future, if you have a project you wanna get done, check out our video archive, see if there's anything there that you need to get your project done. And if you're missing something, then contact us in the comment section and we'll be glad to help you out with your specific questions, okay? 
Group. Our goal is to help you to do a professional job and make your house make you money, all right? Whew. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reality Renovision. If you're new to our channel, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel over here. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications so you'll be told every time a new video comes up. And if you'd like, you can click the link right here and you can binge watch all the episodes that we have on our playlist. Amazing information, everything DIY and decor and renovation and remodeling. Thanks for joining us.